Today, Moscow is a metropolis of over 11 million people. But 800 years ago, it was a small village on the banks of the Moskva River. A modest settlement surrounded by simple wooden defenses. It gave little indication of its future greatness or its ability to evolve through adversity. Moscow was frequently attacked and destroyed. Yet each time, it rose from the ashes, stronger and better defended. Its first real test came in 1238. This time, they faced a new enemy, the Mongols. Moscow had been largely unaware of the growing threat in Central Asia. Genghis Khan, founder of the Great Mongol Empire, had conquered most of the Asian continent. His descendants continued his work to expand the empire. His grandson, Batu Khan, led the armies of what would become known as the Golden Horde. Their goal, to extract money from principalities they conquered. One by one, states in the region, known collectively as the Rus, fell to the Golden Horde. Moscow was next. In 1238, the Mongol Golden Horde surrounded Moscow and besieged its wooden walls. It would only hold out for five days. Moscow burned. That could have been the end of its story, but the people of Moscow were resilient. They would not give up their home or their control of the Moskva River, an important trade route. They began to rebuild and strengthen Moscow's defenses. Yet one question remained. Would the terror return? Moscow faced certain ruin as Mongol raiders burned their way through the wooden city. With no other Rus coming to their aid, it was up to the people of Moscow to drive away their attackers and beat out the flames. Подписчицы готовы, 
the remaining Mongols were driven away by the tenacious Muscovites. With the Mongol raiders repelled and the fires extinguished, the Muscovites began rebuilding. The Muscovites knew that they could rapidly construct buildings out of wood, and so gathered what they needed from the forest. The woods surrounding Moscow provided an abundance of resources, but danger lurked within. Predators stalked in the shadows looking for an easy meal. Есть. 
Тихо. Иду вперед. Зидание. Жду. As the city rose from the ashes, the Muscovites would lay the foundations for a unique fortified complex. This iconic structure would be known as the Kremlin. Several villagers had fled during the Mongol attack, and some were still in hiding. The fleeing villagers had taken refuge in forest hunting cabins. Here, the Muscovites could bring valuable animal pelts, which provided them a good livelihood. Готово есть. Иду. Иду помалу. 
Вот я готов. Набрать. Набрать. Повинуемся. Готов. Есть. Сюда. Убийщицы. Слушаемся. Тихо. The once unassuming village of Moscow had been rebuilt as a city poised for growth. But to protect the city from further Mongol raids, it would need a fierce military and a strong defensive perimeter. The Muscovites knew that the terror from the steppe could return at any time. Копейщицы, глядите! Работа ждет. Начну трудиться. Having been caught off guard by the Mongols before, the Muscovites knew they could come under attack at any moment. Strong defenses would give them a better chance of protecting their city. Молчите, сделаю. Готовы, трудитесь и есть. Дело есть. Наконец-то и надо мной. Что будете привязать? Наконец-то и надо мной. Убираем привязку. Приуготов надо мной есть. Устроено будет. Приуготовляйтесь, Коби! Приуготовляйтесь! 
Готовы трудитесь и ехать? Ясно есть. Что стреляет? Копейщик сделать надо. Идите. Копейщицы, грядите. Люди, служите, готовьте. Чего делать надо? Но... Да, сделаю. Буду древо рукой. Вот я на пранк сделаю. Сделаю. Делаю я все возможное. Начну трудитесь. Приуготовляйтесь, копейщицы. На газе будет сделать. Вот я на пранк. Сейчас. Ополчение есть. Сейчас. Я построю сие. Дело есть. Сейчас. Чего делать? Сделаем сейчас. Построено будет. Внемлите наказу моему. Слушайте, воини. Идите в путь, воини. Слушаюсь. Грядите в путь. Готовы. Выхожу. Начну трудить. Слушайте наказ. Слушайте! 
Слушайте наказ. Идем. Внемлите наказ своему. Hearing the foreboding beat of the Mongol war drums, the Muscovites brace themselves for another raid. Muscovites 
had successfully defended their newly built city against the Mongol raid. Now that Moscow could defend itself, its rulers looked to expand their influence into new territories. archers were elite troops who galloped into battle, shooting their bows from the saddle, arrow after arrow after arrow. The key to horse archery is being able to fit an arrow to the string, draw it back, and release very, very quickly. Horse archers use a special device called a thumb ring, and this gives us a special technique to lock the arrow onto the bow and shoot. With the thumb draw, the arrow is placed on the right-hand side of the bow. And so taking an arrow from the quiver and onto the string was extremely efficient, allowing horse archers to shoot in rapid succession. The three main shots are the forward shot, the side shot, and the back shot, also called the Parthian shot. Both Moscow and the Mongols had a horse archery tradition that stretched back for centuries. Their armies were well matched with these light and versatile troops, and their conflicts were characterized by the horse archers' fluid style of warfare. Horse archers were famed for their surprise attacks. In Moscow's armies, they could be deployed rapidly in many different terrains, and then appear as if from nowhere. In addition to being expert with their bows, they used both javelins and swords for close quarter fighting. Attacks could come from any side, so horse archers had to shoot both left and right-handed. Shots taken behind the head offered additional variety in the angles of attack. They were also expert at swarming across an enemy's front to decimate his lines. They were quick to retreat and just as quick to renew their attacks. Horse archers were Moscow's crack troops. They patrolled the borders and held them against invaders. 